Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, Intel completely changed their naming. Certain gaming PCs are banned in these six states. Official word on AMD's Ryzen 6000 and RX 7000, and AMD has done it. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Intel has just released a new naming scheme for their upcoming nodes. And let's just say it's going to confuse a lot of people, especially since some of these have already been named by Intel in the past. Of course, that could easily be intentional since they sound a whole lot better than they did before. Then again, node size hasn't referred to the actual size of a transistor's gate in a while. Either way, you can see Intel revealed the new naming scheme that changes things up quite a bit. For starters, their already announced 10 nanometer enhanced superfin will now be called Intel 7. That gives a 10 to 15% performance per watt gain over 10 nanometer superfin and should be what's in their upcoming Alder Lake CPUs. Next is what used to be called Intel 7 nanometers and is now called Intel 4, and that comes with a very nice 20% performance per watt uplift over Intel 7. Then there's Intel 3, which comes with an 18% performance per watt improvement over Intel 7. And finally is Intel 20A, with the A referring to Angstrom, and this comes with the new transistor architecture as well as a new interconnect. At the end of the day, they're just names, but they're important to know moving forward. Now, before I get to the next story, if you love getting the most up-to-date PC hardware news, make sure to subscribe, as well as hit that bell icon to get notifications. Not only that, but if you like talking PC hardware, make sure to join the GamerMeld Discord server for free at discord.gg GamerMeld. Check that out today. Next up, a new energy law just went into effect that literally bans certain gaming PCs in California, Oregon, Colorado, Washington, Hawaii, and Vermont. And yes, that's not a joke, but it's not as bad as some outlets seem to suggest. Though I will say that it's going to be expanded later this year. Currently though, it does not affect DIY PCs, meaning it only affects pre-built systems. Second, the build targets power consumption of your PC only when it's idle or inactive. Think sleep mode or hibernation. What's really weird about the new law is that it actually affects lower end PCs more than higher end ones. Basically, the more peripherals and certain parts like that that you have, the higher wattage you're allowed to use. And once you reach a certain threshold, you're considered to have a high, expandable computer and you don't need to meet the requirements. At the end of the day, this does have a real effect on PCs. For example, if you go to Alienware's site, you'll see that some PCs have a disclaimer if you're in the US. I'm sure as time goes on, PC makers will likely make PCs based on compliance, but for now, if you're in one of the states I mentioned, you'll probably want to be careful about what PCs you buy. Next up for today, we have official word from AMD on their next-gen CPUs and GPUs. The details were given during AMD's Q2 investor call, and starting things off, AMD claims that supply issues will continue throughout 2021, which means prices will likely remain higher for longer than we originally thought, at least for AMD's RX 6000 cards. Then again, they also claim that things will finally start to get better at the beginning of next year. And that's obviously good news because it means we shouldn't have these problems with next-gen GPUs. And speaking of next-gen, AMD CEO Lisa Su stated during the call that, quote, We remain on track to launch next-generation products in 2022, including our Zen 4 processors built with industry-leading 5 nanometer process technology and our RDNA 3 GPUs. Basically, AMD's RX 7000 and Ryzen 6000 or 7000 depending on their naming scheme for Zen 3D are in fact coming next year. And that means 5 nanometer CPUs along with the MCM GPUs, at least given the leaks we've seen are correct. At the end of the day, 2022 is set to be a huge year for PC gaming. And speaking of AMD's investor call, the company actually confirmed something massive. That is, they've begun shipping what should be one of the first MCM GPUs. As I've said in the past, multi-chip module GPUs essentially combine smaller GPUs into one chip. This helps to overcome the hurdle of just making chips bigger because the bigger they are, the lower the yield rates are since you have a higher chance something goes wrong. Eventually, it gets to a point where yield rates are so low it just isn't feasible. 
and that's why companies like NVIDIA are looking into using MCM designs for future architectures. Well, as you can see in AMD's financial results, they've begun shipping their next generation Instinct accelerators based on their CDNA2 architecture i.e. the MI200. And as Tom's Hardware points out, we pretty well know that the MI200 features two dies connected with the Infinity Fabric along with 128GB of HBM2E memory. What's so incredible about this is that it would mean AMD actually beat Intel to the punch. Remember that Intel has been talking about their MCM-based GPUs for a while now. And sure, they let some developers try it out in the cloud a little while back, but it looks like AMD is the first to actually release their MCM GPU to customers. At the end of the day, I'd argue this is a really huge feat. Let's just say I'm excited for the future of GPUs. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's next-gen CPUs and GPUs, or do you just wish that you could get a hold of a GPU now? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!